because I know I wish someone told me these kind of stuff before I went into Osaka. Thinking about sneaker shopping in Osaka, I got you covered. Let's get it. What's up fam? Thanks once again for tuning into the channel. This is Kickspot where we talk everything about sneakers, lifestyle travel, and a little bit of everything in between. Obviously I'm back in Australia, but this is sort of like a filler episode in an anime between my vlogs that I did go to Japan. So obviously in this video, I'm gonna be talking about a beginner's guide on where to go for sneakers in Osaka. Cause the first stop that we went to on our journey in Japan was to Osaka. So the reason why we went to Osaka first is because it's cheaper to fly there first compared to flying straight to Tokyo. So you save a little bit of money there and we kind of want to save Tokyo for the last leg of the trip. For us, it seems like there's more to do there. Tokyo is so big, there's so much to do there compared to the other major cities like Osaka, Kyoto and all that kind of stuff. So that's why we usually try to save Tokyo for last. But going by saying that Osaka is still a huge city. If you've been, you know what I'm talking about. And that's why I'm going to be helping you guys have a little bit of a guide or a sort of like a plan of attack if you're going to go for sneakers in Osaka. So let's get into this video. There are obviously a lot of sneaker stores, sneaker brands out in Osaka. So your first thing that you're going to do is go to go through all your socials and make a list of all the places that you want to go first. So you already might have some in mind like Adidas, Nike, uh, Asics, all the, the normal brands or all the normal big brands that you see in international places. But you want to try and look for those other places that are so, sort of more unique to Japan. And uh, some of these places are ABC Mart, uh, Atmos, uh, I think even K, K Skip, or some of those more local brands to Japan. The reason why I tell you to make a plan is because you're going to be doing a lot of walking in Japan, especially when you get older, the more steps you take, the more kind of, uh, you know, these steps need to count more on where you want to go. You don't want to get really lost anywhere because it can get pretty tiring. So just for reference, we were doing 15 to 20,000 steps in Japan day so it's really important to have good footwear and once again it's really important to know where you're going before you actually go some people like to kind of just say oh like let's just kind of plan it from there like kind of wing it kind of thing but I would really highly suggest you guys to kind of pick out the stores that you want to go first but before we continue I want to talk to you guys about IP Royal if you're in the sneaker bot game and you need a reliable proxy server IP Royal got you covered because having a bogus proxy server can get you banned for life from that online retail. And what's worse is that you don't get the sneakers that you, or item, whatever it is, that you were going for. Residential proxies come from real devices with real ISP issued connections. Bots use these proxies to mask their activity and become indistinguishable from other regular shoppers, which helps bypass the capture requests. More importantly, by using residential proxies as close as possible to the sneaker website's physical servers, bodies can enjoy lower latency and complete their purchases faster than anyone else. And once again, IP Royal has provided me with a 30% discount code to give to you guys. And it's super easy to use. Let me show you how. First, you gotta go onto the website. You log on. And for this one, we are going to use the Royal Residential Proxies. Click that. Next, create new order. To apply the discount code, go to the bottom where it says coupon. Type in the code, which is kicks 30 press enter. And then bang, it says coupon code has been applied. And that's it guys. You get that 30% discount on your proxy server straight away. So just another big shout out to IP Royal for supporting me and my channel and helping me make better videos for you guys. Back to the video. So what I suggest first, is to make a list of all the places that you want to go to. Don't make a plan or a route on how to get there straight away. I would suggest once you have that list of all the places you want to go to, find out where all of them are first and then group them all together. It just makes finding a route or like spending a whole day in a certain area a lot easier compared to just going to all these different random places, which will take you a lot more time, obviously. And <laughs> it's just gonna make you more tired. And uh, you, you wanna kind of maximize the day or maximize the time that you are going to a certain place. So you can see all these kind of different places first in that one area before moving to the next. I mean, I know it's pretty obvious, but the thing is, sometimes you don't know where certain stores are because you might think it's in one place, but it's actually 
in another one. So uh, it's always just really, really good to place to plan it so you can know where everything is. And if I would suggest you guys, uh, there's two main spots that I would suggest going to first. First one is the Dotonbori area. And if you guys haven't been yet, Dotonbori is like a main street where all the, some of the best street food and like restaurants are. You can't miss it. It's definitely a must visit place to go. I know it might be a sort of like a tourist trap, but definitely you got you to see it if you go to Osaka. Yes, that's where you see a lot of the culture there. A lot of the, some of the best food that you can get in Osaka can be found there. There's also a connecting kind of shopping strip that goes all the way down for, for ages. You'll be, if you walk from one side to the other side, it could take you at least half an hour. You're just going one way. That's how many stores there are in that kind of shopping strip. So in that shopping strip, there are a lot of different kind of brands. Adidas, they got Zara. They got ABC Mart, they have an Atmos there, and they have all these other independent resale shops. That's one good place to make a start. And you'll probably really notice that there's a lot of people there. If you're not really into that kind of stuff, you can go to another place called Orange Street. Now, you're gonna wanna take note that Orange Street is where all the really kind of high-end brands are. So what you'll find there is Babe, you'll find uh, Supreme, Undefeated, find also Union there. There's less people going down in that area, but, if you're into that kind of stuff, you know, definitely it's still a really good place to actually go. Every time I go to Osaka, I make it a point to at least go to Orange Street at least once so I can pick up something from Babe, uh, even though I can't really afford it. Uh, you know, just to go and have a look and uh, see all the kind of things that we don't really have in Australia because those brands, uh, you know, they're really popular. But I like to bring stuff from Japan back to Australia. I don't really want to get all the kind of stuff that I can get in Australia and then bring it back in Australia, if that makes sense. So I try to go for the more unique things that I won't be able to get in Australia. So it's more kind of like, it, it kind of stays in my collection a lot longer and it becomes more sentimental and memorable because I got it from a different place other than where I live. So that's those two suggestions I could give about Osaka. Try Orange Street and also try the Doton Bori area. So obviously there are more than just those two parts of Osaka that you can go sneaker shopping in. Definitely do your research. Uh, I know there's a lot of other different places. Ambush, the brand. Uh, if you, when I w went to Osaka, I saw people wearing the Air Force One Ambush collaboration. And uh, I was like, man, where did they get all that kind of stuff? So I couldn't really find it on the main strip or in Orange Street. I think there's a store or a retailer that sells Ambush stuff sort of near the Orange Street area, uh, but it's, I think it might be a little bit like, you might need to take a little detour, and that's why I wasn't able to find it. That's why I say to you guys, if you want to uh, plan all the best places, like, you know, the, the place where most of the kind of shops that you want to visit first, and then if you want, if you really want to visit those other uh, different kind of uh, unique brands or shops that aren't in that area, you can kind of branch off to it and uh, go visit as well. I, I wasn't able to do that because um, obviously I was, get, I was getting so tired. And that's another thing that I'm trying to get into. Try to take note about all the shopping that you're doing because when I was in Osaka, we definitely did shopping before we even got to Orange Street. So before I got to Orange Street, I had kind of two bags already full of clothes. Uh, like, so it was kind of a lot more tiring. And I had a backpack full of like camera gear as well. So it's, it's a lot to like, lug around and that's something that you need to pay attention to so if i were you if you know you're gonna do a lot of shopping i would advise getting a, a shoulder strap bag that you can pack easy so one of the suggest is get a shoulder strap bag like this it's the unique low one i'm pretty sure if you've been on tiktok watching all the trends and stuff you would have seen it so i i brought the the cream bag version of this and it's it's really light and uh you know it matches all or you should match all of your outfits because it is black and it's very, it holds a lot of stuff. So even if you're not planning to buy a lot of stuff, I would definitely suggest bring a bag, some sort of bag that you can carry your stuff in because every time that I went out, I basically brought this and I always came back and it was like really jam packed. So just a bit of advice, always bring a bag with you. So another piece of advice is if you have things that you're looking for in general or in particular, have pictures ready to show the staff. Because uh, when I went there, I was trying to look for these sneakers. I was trying to look for the Nike ACG uh, Manafly Low 2.0. I was trying to look for this sneaker or any information regarding Nike ACG stuff. When I went into store, I couldn't really find anything and all this kind of stuff. So it just makes it easier if you have a picture already to show them where they can just easily tell you, no, we don't have that sneaker. Or you can check on our website for upcoming releases or something like that to make it easier for you. Because not everyone, unfortunately, speaks English. 
in the bigger stores like Nike or Adidas, they have dedicated staff that can speak Japanese and English to help you out, which is great. But some of the other uh, smaller stores and all that, they, they speak more Japanese and they kind of only know the certain, certain phrases. Like if you say Nike, if you say Air Max or something like that, they know those kind of things where if you're trying to explain something like my KCG or something like that, uh, they tend to be a little bit more, um, it's harder for them to understand or like it'll be harder for them to tell you that oh, they might not have it all that kind of stuff so it's always just really easy if you show a photo bang if that they don't have it it's like no no we don't have that one and it just saves you so much more time another piece of advice is i would say that getting to places early is always best if you don't know about the culture in japan a lot of people are there obviously so sometimes it can be a line to get into a certain place just like all the big brands in Orange Street, like Supreme, they always have like a line or one of those, you know, those line dividers or like guiders, whatever they're called, like the belt things, the ropes or whatever they're called. I don't know. Um, they basically have a lot of those in certain shops like Babe, just in case the crowd gets really long. They don't want their stores fully crowded, obviously. So they make people wait outside. So that's something that you got to be something that you need to take into consideration. Just because it's open doesn't mean you can get in straight away. So it happened to me in Tokyo where I wanted to get into the World of Flight store, which is a new Nike store out in Tokyo. It opened at 12 in like lunchtime and I got there maybe 35 minutes before it opened. I wasn't, I wasn't aware that it opened at 12. I thought it opened at 10. So when I got there, I thought, I thought there was a release because there was people lining up already. I'm like, I was asking people trying to put in translation on Google, like, oh, what does, uh, you know, is there a, a release online or something? Is there, are you camping out for something? And all they, all they said is, this is my first time here or <laughs> something like that. It was, and literally it was just a line to get in the store. And uh, there was no new releases or anything like that. So it's just, I don't know, because there's a lot of people that try to get in and they just want to manage it to make it look good. And they don't want to clog up the um, sidewalk. So that's why, yeah, they make people uh, line up and all this kind of stuff because everything is really orderly in Japan. And you'll notice that too. So once again, try to get there in early because the earlier you are, then like, you know, the more chance to get that item that you're really looking for. So that's pretty much it guys and uh, just have fun with it because I know when I was there like my mind was like racing every time I walked past I think it's like oh I want to see that oh I want to see that place and technically I don't know it, like within two days or three days that we were there it was it was literally impossible to go and visit every store there were so many times where after the first day I'd look at the kind of say oh why didn't I go to that store so I go to that one and then there'll be other times where you think you missed out on all these other things and you only remember maybe once you've left that actual city like Osaka and then oh man I should have went to this store so it's okay don't worry about it just have fun and just don't try to pack in too many stores or locations in one day because it's hard to enjoy if you're always just kind of rushing and going to different places all the time. Take it in, take in the culture, take in the experience because Osaka is a beautiful place. And especially because it's different to all the kind of the Western kind of culture, take some time to kind of appreciate all this kind of stuff that they have there. Yeah, what I'm just trying to say is like me, oh man, I miss Japan already. I mean, I miss Australia, obviously, uh, because I live here, but like there's certain things about Japan, certain brands that you can't get in Australia. So those, those are the kind of things that I miss. And I hope this guide was a little helpful for you guys, because I know I wish someone told me these kind of stuff before I went into Osaka, because I, I wouldn't know really where to start or how to kind of tackle things. So I hope this one helped you. If it did, please give me that big thumbs up. If you like the content in general, because I will be doing a lot more uh, Japan stuff in the next videos and stuff. So please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell if you want to get notified when my videos come up. So once again, thank you for watching this video. And in the next video, I should be going to Kobe because we went to and tried that Kobe beef. Please watch that video. And because all, all this kind of stuff, all the likes, comments, and subscription, all that kind of stuff helps my channel to grow, to make better videos for you guys. So once again, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.